how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out the funk chord, which is E9. Now, E9 specifically because bass players love slapping the low E string. So the lowest note on a regular four string bass guitar is the note E. So all of those slap players love playing in the key of E. So E is a really, really good key to be practicing your funk in. So let's get to a close up and check out how to play an E9 chord. <laughs> Okay, so here is our E9 chord. So let's start off by putting the third finger down and it's going to be doing a mini bar and covering the thinnest three strings. Okay, so lift it off, place it down so it's covering the thinnest three strings, making sure that the tip of the finger is not touching the fourth string. Okay, that's a big deal. Right next to the fret as well and sort of just slide it up so it's just about touching the fret but not quite. Okay, that's where you want it. Nice and parallel with the fret which is a little unusual as well, because quite often our fingers are in an angle, but this time you want it right up parallel with the fret. Next finger to go down is going to be the first finger, which is going to be pressing down the sixth fret of the fourth string, okay? You don't have to be trying to get it right on the tip of the finger, a little bit on the flatter than usual, but again, making sure that you get it right up next to the fret, not too far away. Now, the really important part of this chord is the second finger reaches over the third finger. Okay, so if you try and put it like that in between third finger and first finger, it's definitely going to mute the fourth string, okay? So you end up either with this, okay, with that note being pressed down by the second finger as well, so you may as well not have the first finger, okay? Whereas this way, right against the fret, first finger, and this one reaches over, we get this note here ringing out nice and clear. Okay, it's a big part, big part of the sound, this note. So just really, once you've got the, the chord down, go through and play the notes one at a time, because you might find you get this. Okay, so that's this finger touching that string, so make sure it sounds nice like this, and then work on getting that second finger to reach over while you keep that note clear. Okay, now the thicker string, is also an E, so it's quite possible to play that low E as well. Quite often that's going to start to sound a little bit muddy, so you want to be able to use the second finger to touch the thicker string, okay? Just to mute that string out as well. Now thumb placement with this chord is an interesting one. I usually prefer to have thumb around the back, which is helpful. We're not going to do it straight away, but when we're doing stuff like side sliding, when we're doing that sliding motion, it's a lot easier to have the thumb kind of sitting around the back and it works as a pivot. You can see the tip of my thumb there is not moving, it's staying in the one place, which gives us a really nice pivot spot. However, there are times where thumb might want to wrap over and just give a little bit of extra protection by muting the thickest string. Now, part of learning this chord, which is a really important thing in the funk kind of school, is realizing that we're going to use some scratching. Now, scratching is where all of the strings are muted, so you get this kind of effect. Okay, and you want to be able to go from the chord to a scratch. Okay, you can, you, you can see there that I've, the chord shape is still intact. So, I've got the chord, let's get thumb back around for now, and then by relaxing all of the fingers but leaving them exactly where they are, we get this muted hit. There's a couple of things, kind of common things that happen that uh, you need to be aware of. First of all, if your third finger is right up against the fret, on the seventh fret, and there's nothing else touching, you can get harmonics, which don't sound good when you're trying to be doing a scratch, okay? So, you want to make sure that the underneath of the first finger is also just lightly touching those thinner strings as well to help them stop creating a little harmonic there. And the second finger as well, again, if it's just touching lightly at right at the seventh fret, you're likely to get a harmonic. So that's where sometimes it can be useful to get thumb involved with that as well. So one, one of the things that you want to work on is playing an E7 chord, making sure you've got mute, note, 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 everything's nice and clear in the chord, then relax the chord, and make sure that everything's muted. So chord, relax it. We've got a little bit of the harmonic there on the thicker string. So I'm going to bring thumb over to get involved with that. So chord and then relax for the scratch. Chord, mute. Chord, mute. You can see that the shape is not moving. If we try to move to a hole like a mute, if we're going to go 
There's no way that we're going to be able to get from a chord to a muted position straight away. So we have to do it just by relaxing the chord shape and getting used to trying to let these fingers touch as many strings as they can. Because like I said, one, you know, we're just going to get all harmonics if it's just those fingers touching there. But see the f action of first finger? Harmonics? Not so many harmonics. Well, there's a little bit resonating there on the thicker string, but... We can also control that by what strings we pick. So if we're doing, I wouldn't be playing the thicker string with my with the pick. I wouldn't be letting the pick anywhere near it if I could help it. So, but you can hear as well. The other thing that's going on here is as I relax the chord, the chord stops. I'm not muting. I'm not doing anything with the picking hand. Just strum, and when I feel like it relax the chord and by relaxing those fingers so they're still touching the strings but not actually pressing down the chord stops okay another really big deal in fun is when chords are going to ring out so you might have okay so really learning to control the fingers pressing down and relaxing. So when they're off, you can scratch. That'll also stop the chord. So you'll be able to sustain and then relax the fingers and the chord will stop. Now there's also two little variations I figure I'll show you while we're checking out the E9 as well, just so you can have a bit of fun with them. The first one is really, really common in funk, which is playing an E13 chord. And it's a bit of a stretch, but it's just little finger going down on the ninth fret of the thinnest string. Again, that's part of the reason why you want to make sure that that finger is uh, parallel and not at an angle, because little finger's never going to reach unless it's nice and parallel with the fret. But Okay, really, really nice little movement there is just adding little finger down. Okay, lots of variations that you'll be able to have a bit of fun with exploring little finger going down the ninth fret of the thinner string to get our E13, okay, nine, and then this is 13. Now the other really common variation that you get in funk is an E7 sharp nine chord, which is also called the Hendrix chord. So if we've got our regular ninth chord like that, we want to go put the third finger down on the tip. So instead of doing the little bar like that, it's using the fingertip, little fingers going down in the eighth fret of the second string and muting the thinner string. So we've got muted thicker string, 7th fret, 6th fret, 7th fret, 8th fret, and muted thinner string. Okay, this is often called the Hendrix chord, right? But it's used a lot in funk as well, because it's a really, really cool sounding chord. It's, it's both got a major third and a minor third in it, so it's a very, very cool for kind of rock and blues and funk and all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. Other good thing about this one, you'll find if you do a lot of funk stuff, the underneath of your third finger can get pretty sore from doing all this sort of slidey stuff, at least mine is, from doing a lot of filming on this funk course. But uh, as soon as you get into this chord, you don't have that mini bar anymore. So if you're doing a lot of funk practice like this, and the underneath of your third finger is starting to hurt, swap it over for the E7 sharp nine chord. Mm -hmm. You can use that anytime you like, and it's a real lifesaver. So there's a few elements I just want to remind you about that are really, really important to practice. So the first thing is making sure that every note in the chord is ringing out clear. Okay, so just put your chord down, strum it, pick each note one at a time, and strum again. Lift the chord off, put the chord back on, strum, pick it out one at a time. Okay, really particularly the fourth string. That's the note that most people are going to kind of have a bit of fun making that note ring out nice and clearly, okay? So give that a little bit of attention. Second thing, being able to lift it so you get a mute. So you've got the chord, and then lift it up, and you've got a nice mute without too many harmonics and or kind of funny strings ringing out or any open strings ringing out. So chord, mute, chord, Mute. And it's really important because we're going to be doing that the very next lesson. We're going to be using this chord and putting it into some grooves and some very specific rhythm patterns. So really important that you can get the chord and then the mute. And also have a go at making sure that you can lift off the chord without having to mute anything else to make sure it stops. So strum the chord 
and then lift it to make sure that all of the notes are ringing, uh, uh, are stopping dead. Chord, mute. Really silent. You don't want to make sure you want to. You know, that's kind of half done. So, or that's obviously not a good example either. Okay, you want it silent. So chord, lift it off. It should be dead silent. Okay, they're the three things. So chord, good quality, being able to lift it to do the mute and to be able to control the length of the chord is held by just lifting it up. As well, have a bit of a fun muck around with the 13th chord and the uh, seven sharp nine chord. So just going. Just have, you know, play about a little bit. And same with the seven sharp nine chord. There's a, a great song as well called Pick Up The Pieces by the Average White Band, which the whole intro is just this E7 sharp nine. Go. So it might be worth checking that out as well. If you're not familiar with the average white band, they're definitely a band that you should be checking out if you're going to get into funk. Of course, there are loads of suggestions and recommended albums on my site as well. So do go and check out each of these lessons on the site to see some tabs, written out sheet music examples and all of that sort of stuff. So uh, I'll see you for plenty more lessons and some wicked funk grooves coming up right now uh, very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye bye.